that works.
Hey, what's up, guys? Okay, let's see who's here. Okay, I got two people here. What's up, Brian? And Electrical Skateboard. I'm not sure who that is. I'm sorry if I forgot. I probably asked last time. I apologize. Let me know if you guys can hear this okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. How's everybody doing? Yeah, yeah, I know. It's awesome, man. I think it's, like, amazing that you made that whole map in a week since the last cast. I mean, that's pretty astonishing, actually. Yeah, I never even made one that quick, I don't think so. Good job, man. Really. Kind of waiting to see. Uh, trying to see. <clears throat> I was kind of hoping we'd have more people. I'm not sure why I'm only showing two. I was thinking that uh, that JMR and Clips and Uni and a few other people were going to come, but apparently, apparently they're not coming, or they're coming late. Yeah, I know. That's why I don't want to get too deep. Uh, <clears throat> I guess we'll show uh, before. I want to wait to do my main talk to see if maybe a couple more people show up. If not, well, an audience of, you know, two is better than an audience of none. And uh, I'd rather help the people that show. But in the meanwhile, I want to show uh, real quick. I want to take a look at the uh, the data file for paintball for quark here that we're working with and show you uh, how I fixed the issue that popped up. So this is the PB2 data. You can actually load this file up in the quark and edit it directly and then save it back, uh, which is how I did half of what we did. Uh, some of the stuff is kind of weird, like these texture options. They don't, there's like hidden data for these things, toolbox folders. There's hidden data for that too. Not quite sure how to get to all that stuff, but here we have the entity forums for Paintball 2. And if we go to, uh, uh, we're here in flag. Now, these are the uh, specifics, you know, angle count, game mode, team, and we're all the stuff we're used to using. The problem that I had, which was, which was making it not work, was that these were set to, if you, if you hover your mouse uh, over... Uh, the text field here, you can see what the options are, and there's a whole bunch of stuff you can put in these. Uh, but what happened was, was uh, if you leave it blank, it's the same as an E, so that's why it's blank, but it's the same thing. What they were set to was EF, like this, which stands for Edit Floating Point Number. And for some reason, Paintball 2 does not read these numbers in properly when they're in the map, so we set them back to text, which is either E, which is, I'm sorry, which is either E or blank, either one, either one actually works. Uh, and here, and uh, we're talking about like the, uh, the paintball guns and stuff here. This is where I have not done the work yet. And this is where the work would have to be. And I haven't quite figured out how to do it yet. So maybe you can look into this too and let me know if you figure out an easy way to do this because what it wants here for the paintball guns, right, is, a 
uh, is the list separated by string 0D, which is carriage return. What I haven't figured out yet is how to get the text in here with the carriage returns and have it not like just exit the thing every time I do it. So that's uh, why we're going to, it's the same thing here would be a string of values separated by the same thing, string 0D to uh, delineate differences between the, <clears throat> to delineate differences between the values. So, you know, we would have zero for PGP, one for, well, I guess there's no PGP, but you know, one for whatever kind of paintball gun, two, three, four, blah, 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 up and down the road like that for the paintball gun type. And uh, it's kind of a pain in the ass. So for the meanwhile, we have to do this manually. You know, you already know about this. But uh, that's what I'm working on uh, and trying to figure out how to make it work. And I haven't quite figured it out yet. So, but uh, that's what that was all about. Uh, what else is in here? I also want to change it so that base here will come up with a brush the way it's supposed to instead of having to insert one manually. That, I have no freaking idea how uh, how to do that. <laughs> so I'm still looking into that. We could take a look at... Uh, where's Quark? Add-ons. We can actually load up... For examples, I was using, um, where is it? Quake2, Quake2Entities.QRK. We can edit this one. Can't save it because it's actually in use. But we can take a look at it. And um, you could see the entities here. There are quite a few for Quake2. And something, all the, almost all of these actually work in Paintball. But um, what was I looking at? Uh, let's see. You know, we have our water brush here. Uh, see, here is an example of one that actually has, like the paintball gun is going to have a combo box here with these values, but the string 0D is not actually in there. It doesn't get drawn. So what I don't know how to do is to put that in and have it like this and have it actually work. So, you know, if anybody can figure that out, please let me know because it's driving me crazy. Uh, What I also want to do is to edit, uh, I'm going to make a version of this to use just for paintball to uh, have the, uh, where is it? Uh, in the world spawn here, this is the actual world spawn that gets added to the map and you can see all the, uh, all the relevant data for our grad, the sunlight, all those kind of things. So what I'm going to do is actually modify this and put in uh, game mode, uh, the teams, the team numbers, the team names, you know, all that kind of stuff that you have to type in at the end. I'm going to add it in here right at the beginning. Uh, so that's something else that I'm, I should have in by next week or sometime during the week. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, anyway, that's, you know, that's what we've been working on or what I've been working on. And uh, let's see. I right, just close quirk. Oh, we got one more. Okay, so we got, I got three people. Electrical skateboard. I'm not sure who you are. Sorry about that. I'm not sure what your name is in uh, in Paypal. Uh, unless that's uni or something. So. Oh, okay, cool. Thanks, man. I appreciate that, John. Uh, what else I want to look at here? Uh, Okay, well, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to get to work here on this because I uh I guess we're not going to have that many people coming today, which is fine. They can always watch the stream later on, so 
what I wanted to talk to you about, as I mentioned uh, before, was to uh, set up a method for creating maps that will save you time and effort and trouble. Uh, basically a way to organize your map ahead of time so that you don't get you don't trip yourself up with all the power. And uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to make five empty folders in the world spawn. One, eight. Nope. So these five, this is pretty much how I did my, uh, Okay, we'll do we'll do questions after this. Okay, the I, this is basically how I did my maps for the last couple that I did, like Roundup and stuff like that. This was the way that I organized them ahead of time. It, so we got five groups here, right? So the first group, we're gonna rename this as Map Shell. This is for the actual outside framework of your map. Basically, what you make with the wall makers. Uh, Anything that actually defines the basic shape of your map outside of um, other things. So our next group is features, right? Features is for anything on your map that you want to affect visibility, meaning uh, large items, terrain, uh, jaggy cliff faces, uh, anything that, that adds to the shape of your map and should be considered for visibility purposes. Uh, next group is details. Details is for anything, uh, chairs, barrels, small objects, railings, anything small that can be set as a detail brush so that it doesn't interfere with the visibility brush uh, would go in here. This makes it easy to, uh, well, I'll explain that in a second. So our uh, next group here is entities. So this will be all of your entities, your players, uh, elevators, you know, anything like that. We'll go in here. Anything that's an entity, essentially. And the last group is scratch. And after we make scratch, we're going to right click on it. And where it says right here, ignore to build maps. So that means whatever is in this scratch folder will not be output to BSP to be rendered into a map. So this way uh, you can move, uh, you can use this to create brushes that you're going to use with other things like, uh, let's say a brush that you're going to use to make a part of your uh, wall maker shell with could be created in here and saved in case you want to do something else with it. Um, or maybe parts of your map that you've decided not to use, but you don't want to delete them because you might want to use it for something else. So you might want to bring it back. You move them into here and whatever is in here will not render to the map. And you can also make it, obviously, uh, you can also make it hidden so that it's out of the way and things like that. So, so we have map shell, features, details, and entities. was I just saying? Sorry, I lost my train of thought, guys. Uh, okay, so now with all the folder options that you have, you can very easily turn off. Uh, I recommend also this info player start that you see here outside of the map. I always leave that there because that way you can turn off your team spawns, entities, and things like that, and you can always get into the map. There has to be a player spawn somehow. So I always leave that one outside of these so that it's always there just in case. Um, so yeah, so things like this, like, uh, you know, uh, if you have a hole in your map or something, you can turn off your features, you know, ignore to, ignore to the map build and hide it. And now you can see your map shell without all of this stuff in the way. You can run your compile again and see if you still have holes. That way you'll know if your hole is being made because of something you did in the features or something you made in the... Uh, or something you made in the uh, map shell itself. 
Same thing with details. If you're having problems, you can eliminate things one at a time to remove them from the uh, from the issue. This was actually a little more useful. Excuse me. This was actually more useful back in the day when compiles took a lot longer and you just wanted to test something. But so now what you can do, let's say uh, we're going to make these are just brushes for no reason. We'll give them a texture here. Okay, not sure what happened there, guys. I changed my... Uh, I reinstalled Windows last night in Quark, so I'm not sure why that popped up, but it's not important. So we're just going to pick a texture for these brushes. It doesn't really matter what they are. So we'll make another one. Make another one. Wait. Right, so now we have all these brushes, and imagine that these are barrels or something stupid, some little thing or detail. But you can always select all of these, come to here, get to your specifics. All you got to do is just select the folder, and you can set detail brush on all the brushes. What is that crap? Sorry. <laughs> Did I curse? I'm sorry. Uh, this is kind of the point of things like this. You can automatically set detail. That way you don't have to go back later on because you forgot to detail some little thing in your... Uh, oh, you have that texture name issue thing popping up? Yeah, I'm not really sure about that. Uh, you know, we'll get it figured out. I don't think it's really affecting anything. Uh, so yeah, so that's like the use of the detail. Same thing with the features. You can hide out anything in your features. You can even detail the features if you feel like it and ease up the visibility on your map. It makes the lighting take longer and look worse, but it will speed up your map visibility. So yeah, that's this is basically it. This is just my uh, methodology for developing maps. And, you know, once you set this up, you can save this as an empty map and just load it up uh, and then save it under a new name and you have a new map that already has all this stuff already in there. And in your scratch folder, you know, you can put maybe things in there you like to use all the time and leave them in there. When you make a new map, you'll already have those things. So that's uh, that's pretty much that. Uh, what else am I going to Now... The other thing I was talking about with Zhonghua is to make sure whenever you're working, this isn't just about, you know, Quark or Paintball or anything. This is about any kind of work that you're doing to make sure you save everything to an outside folder. Don't save in, don't save things into your Paintball folder. Don't save them in the Quark folder. Probably the best thing to save them to would be like a, you know, an external drive or something that's hooked up so that no matter what happens, you'll always have those work files. So if your hard drive crashes, or Windows goes belly up and you have to reinstall Windows or something, you won't lose your files. But that's, like I said, not really about, you know, Quark or anything. That's just sort of a general way of working. Uh, okay, well, that's uh, that's kind of it. Uh, so what, what was your question about the groups? You're talking about when, like, the group is grayed out or something? When it first it has the thickness of the group, every time you add a brush into it, uh, it takes the thickness of the group, which was annoying. You mean, like, the, like the total size of the brush, or are you talking about the line thickness? Let me let me let me do something here. Hold on, let me let's work in here. I want to 
add another brush into it and then the brush I just added is changing its thickness. I, I not quite following you, dude. Do you mean like the you mean like I said, do you mean like the size of the brush? You're talking about the thickness of the lines or Hey, what's up, Jitsbo? Thanks for coming, man. Wow. Very cool, very cool. Uh, okay, I see, I see. Just the outside. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's just the lines on the page. I'm not sure how they handle that exactly. You can, um, you can actually adjust it and make them thicker and thinner, but I'm not sure why it's changing... <clears throat> So, yeah, basically, you know, uh, what I was showing with the folders here, that's basically all I really wanted to talk about for the methodology because this will, you know, doing something like this, I'm not saying you have to do this exactly because, you know, whatever works for you. Uh, for instance, you know, uh, map shell features and details could all go into, you know, you can make a, a folder. Might help if I don't have a caps lock on, huh? Pony. You know, you could make a folder here with your W Poly, drag that into there, and then you would have all of your things, you know, under one group, which you could also then mess with even more. But I don't know, you know, that's probably a little bit much for something this simple. Uh, let's see. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jitspo, I uh, I kind of thought I was going to have... Yeah, I do have stereo mic. <laughs> or are you wearing headphones? You can hear me move like, hey, I'm over here. And then, hey, I'm over here. Yeah, somebody told me the other day I was crazy for this, but I have the mics and my interface has the input, so why not, you know? Uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah, my viewer list thing is not working right, so I can't see everybody. I actually don't know how many people are here, so... Oh, yeah, because the camera's flipped around. I didn't even think about that. That's a good point. Let me see, uh... Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's not what I wanted. <laughs> Where's the other flip? I thought it had a flip horizontal, but I guess it doesn't. Oh, well. I was going to try and flip the camera back because I'll have to do that later. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm using Streamlabs. Yeah, I know there's a way to do it. I have to go into the... Uh... Where is it? Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Right click. There we go. So now, now my uh, mic and stuff should should work here. Okay. There we go. 
So now you got stereo finger snaps for you. Uh, okay, so... Uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, we... I need anything, uh, Zhang, you want to show off anything? You want to, you want us to take a look at, uh, where your map is so far, or? I want to show, I'd actually like to show this to Jitsbo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to show Jitsbo to show, uh, how much of a map can be made in one week using this program since I've been bugging him about this for 15 years now. <laughs> Make it show some evidence here. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me flip over. Yeah, he's going to send me his map, and uh, when, I, when he does, I'm going to compile it and load it up. <laughs> I'm going to load it up so you guys can see how much work this guy, which to me is amazing because this is faster than I've ever worked, but how much work this guy got done on this map in less than a week. I mean, and apparently it's moved forward from when I saw it, so uh, there's more There's uh, more to see now even than then. Uh, okay, so give me a second, guys. I'm going to save this and... Uh, and uh, load it up and compile it here. I need to know this. There it is, main window. All right, so let's load up his map. So here is uh, the map shell, which the original part he made. Uh, hold on, I lost my context here. I have not played with trench broom, so I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I've heard that it's good. I probably was going to look into it at some point to see what it does, if it does anything different than this. I don't know if this, uh, <clears throat> uh, like, I don't know how it works. I don't know anything about it. Maybe I'll do that next week and we'll take a look at it or something. I'll do that for my next, uh, we'll play around with it and see what it looks like. Um, all right, so we have his map now. All right, guys, so this was uh, this guy's first map in Quark, which he made uh, since last Saturday, uh, since I gave out the files and gave the talk. So just about a little bit less than a week of work for this guy to get a, you know, fairly comprehensive, uh, complete map. And I hope everything goes okay with the compiling here. Uh, guys, just so you know, the um, I'm not sure about the compilers choking out the stream because they eat the processor. Maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. So if, if it suddenly skips or pauses, that's what's going on. Yeah, the mixed face contents there. I want to talk to you about that afterwards, Zhang. Uh, that's probably from where your glass uh, is touching other textures. I'll show you how to fix that. Uh, maybe we'll do that here, too. Okay, so compiled. Oh, you got to... Oh, you changed the elevator to another uh, to another jumper? So let me get uh, let me get outside of here real quick. Yeah, I can help you with the lighting too. If you cut down the uh, if you cut down the the light level for the sunlight quite a bit, it'll take care of some of this saturation problem that you see in the textures here where the red from the, the red from the walls is reflecting, is mixing with the green and bouncing back onto the red and everything, which gives everything sort of a mush of a color. Basically because of the, the way the textures are much brighter and have a, a higher color band, um, 
like basically bandwidth for total color data compared to the original uh, Quake 2 and paintball textures. But uh, we can we can look at that after too. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to show you like this is a this map, this whole entire map. This guy made this in less than in a week. I think it's like astounding considering he's brand new to the program. And uh, we got a fully, you know, capable, working, team ready, ready for play testing map from nothing. Now we don't have, uh, he messed up, he lost the QKM file when he was working on it, which happened to me too when I was mapping, you know. <clears throat> Basically because Quark, you have to be careful when you save a map, make sure that when you pick the name for your map that it actually has the QKM at the end of it. For some reason, it's like an old Windows program and sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't add the file extension for you. So I think now I want to talk about the, uh, the problem you're having, where are these glass textures? And let's see. Well, Jitspo is kind of new to this too, because he wasn't here for last week. So I'm going to show you some of the features of, you know, things that help you work in the editor. I'm going to, uh, <laughs> yeah, I could do a stream on BSP too, on the, like the, the thousand and one ways I can make that program crash. But anyway, the, uh, so where was the underground? Let me see something here. Uh, I can get back under. Oh, you took out the... Oh, you iced up the bottom. Was that basically just to speed up the... Uh, speed up the middle... Uh, like the low runs, kind of? I like the mine carts, though. I like stuff like that, though. Yeah, so let's... Uh... Yeah, the mixed face contents, uh, it would be easier to find if we still had the original map, but uh, I'll try, I'll go through this with you later and we could try to figure out what's making those happen, but. Uh... Yeah, no, I figured it wasn't done. I figured it wasn't done. I just, I like the minecart thing. I like features like that. Things that, I like, I like things in maps that make you feel like you're. Uh... E yeah, theoretically. Yeah, I tried doing that, but actually going brush by brush, I don't see the mixed... Uh, it's actually happening as it compiles the brushes, so I'm not really sure. I never, uh, I never really had to do that in this before. Usually you can find uh, mixed contents in brushes just by checking. You can just go brush by brush. And you'll see over here when you have question marks that you have mixed contents. So I'm not really sure where... Uh... Yeah, you can, but the brushes don't line up one-to-one -one compared to what's compiled. I'm not really sure why. I haven't quite figured it out yet. I'm not sure if it's the uh, it's the fact that that there's. Uh, let's see. I think it may have to do with the fact that we have that he still has some of these brushes still have the the Quake One or I mean the uh, Quake Two damage texture. So chances are, if we go through these brushes, any brushes that have that damaged, uh, we can do. Um, let's see, where is it? Uh. Hang on one second. I'm looking for something here. Uh, there is a... Where is it? Oh, here we go. Search for place textures. So let me see. Maybe this will be it. This is another nice little feature of this. It's kind of like a word processor. So you go in here. You can search for uh, this one, the damage texture. 
but we're going to replace that wherever we find it with uh, just grass 1.8. Oh, I don't have that one. Where is that one? There? Okay. Metal 1.3 one. Sorry, guys. I kind of messed up with my config yesterday, so I'm not sure why. Uh... All right. Let's do this. Okay, so now we're going to replace uh, this Quake 2 damage texture with any generic, you know, uh, texture from the paintball folder. So now all those faces that had that Quake 2 texture now have the uh, proper texture or a texture from paintball. Let's see that affects the compile. Nope. So we still, all right, so there's another group of brushes out here that have, that did actually fix some of them. So that's really what's causing that is, uh, is uh, brushes that have a texture that can't be found. So if we start at 176. So now they do have a, where is it, search for... Texture. It's in here somewhere. I just don't remember. Then faces, holes in map, basic checks, commands. Uh, where is that? Oh, here we go. Okay, so under the Quake 2 menu, uh, Select brush number 176. Now, I don't know why it does that. Oh, maybe. Where's the uh, console? You can always go back. Question mark here. You can go back to your console and see. So we have one. was 176 to 189, I guess. So. Yeah, see, I don't know why this does that. The brush numbers don't work. Maybe it's 0176. Ah, there it is. Okay. 0 for the world spawn, I guess, and 176 for the actual brush. So let's see what's here. Yeah, see, we've got two textures again. Oh. We've got mixed... Uh, Yeah, I'm not sure why we the text some of the textures are flipped. Where it's got a, a forward slash instead of a backward slash. So that I have no idea. We'll get to that. I'm gonna I'll look at I'll look into this after we're done here today to see. Yeah, that's what I put, Jits. It's zero one seven six zero for the the world spawn, I guess. And then one seven six for the brush number. Uh, mixed face content search. No, oh, let's see. Great tune. Um, no, it doesn't appear to have that exact uh, type of thing, but I remember when I was using this before, there is a way to do it. I just don't remember how. So, tricky fours, but. Nah, I don't remember. I know there's a way to do it, honestly. I just don't remember how, because it's been quite a long time. Uh, let's see what we have here. I want to look at the lighting real quick before we go any further. Sun. 
I just want to see something, how this affects the, uh, I just want to see if this affects the, uh, and that thing's really red. Hmm. All right, well, we'll have to look at this after because I'm not really prepared for this, but there's a way to get the saturation down here so that the lighting looks more natural and you don't pick up so much color from the things, but we'll, we'll have to get to that in another thing. All right. Guys, give me, I need like three minutes. I will be right back, okay? Hang on. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, I made that for Frith, but uh, he never showed up, so maybe I'll get him next time. Uh, let's see. Well, I've gone through everything I wanted to talk about, and we take a look at... Uh, you guys have any questions? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good question. Um, let's see. Where's the... Uh There we go. Uh, okay, so what were you asking um, with a keyword? So you mean you mean up in here, like if you're already in this or from before this? Uh, hmm, that's a good question. Uh, let's see. No, oh, not doing anything. Hmm. 
And this will give you a, uh, whatever your last search was. So let me do that again and show you. This is not to find one particular texture, but to find any number of textures that share a common word. Uh, things like that. But I'm trying, I don't know if there's a way to do a shorter... Yeah, that's the only thing I know about that for searching in here is to is to use this and then you can type in, you know, uh, type in whatever you want. And then up here in your search, you'll get any textures that have, you'll get any textures that have that word in it. So that's, that's the only way that I know of searching like that. If there may be another way to do it, you might want to check the, uh, the Quark help file, they have, you know, they have really good, one thing you could say with this program, they have excellent, excellent help facilities. Uh, let me show. Let me bring up the help here. Oh, yeah, it wants me to use IE11 here. Uh, that's fine. Which I've never loaded. Anyway. So yeah, here the, here is the, the, the Quark help files, and they're divided up pretty much exactly the way uh, you know, you have your basics for making maps. Uh, let's see the texture browser. Yeah, this is the same thing I was just showing you. Uh, what else can we do here? Hold on one second. Let me close this. So, now if you know the exact name of a texture, like if you want to find a texture and you already know its name, now this is maybe not what you're asking, but you can actually literally just type it right here. Uh, so if we select like right here, we select the top face. Uh, we have PB Sky One. We could actually just go in here and type in any other texture name. P ball slash, you know, change it to Sky Two. You can actually change your textures right there in text. It's kind of halfway to what you were asking for. I don't think that they literally have a way to scroll through by looking with text. So that's a very good idea. I don't think so. No, yeah, what they they should have a little like a like a little box right here where you could type in a word and it'll it'll bring up a you know, a dynamic search, but they hadn't put that in here, so might be possible to write one for it using Python, but that's out, you know, that's outside my skill set. <clears throat> So uh, I want to. I want to. Since Jitsbo decided to show up today and fuck everything up, I'm gonna. I'm gonna <laughs> go over something that we went over last week, which is, uh, you know, pretty much the most powerful aspect of this program, which are the dynamic, uh, dynamic structures. So, so uh, we're gonna do a little repeating here for for Jits. So uh, what we have here is a item called a wall maker. Right now, this is a dynamic plugin that you can drag brushes into. Each brush will then interconnect with the other brushes and create a mitered corner uh, structure around those brushes with the faces of the brushes in reverse. So, for instance, this brush here has a sky texture for its top face, has a, a grass texture for its bottom face, and then the side uh, the side faces all have a wall or a uh, you know, whatever stone or brick or whatever it is that you're going to do. Uh, and then you can, you know, you can connect these together. So for instance, uh, if we take this brush right here, which is like a little closet that I added onto the end of this. We could copy it, paste it, control C, control V, drag it over here. And now if we compile the map again, which happens very quickly, 
the little cube that I just dragged on is now is now map space. And using this, so basically this is basically how I make like the whole outside of my map. It's just using this and then for more intricate details and things fill inside of there, but this gives you a, a sound map without holes, uh, you know, things like that. And then we can take uh, the same thing, drag this one over here. And we could take uh, there. Oops. And then we could take like this, break one more. There we go. Grab the vertice. And there we have, you know, angle corner. E on these right here, yes you can. You can any any kind of brush can go inside the wall maker. You can cut them, clip them, dig holes out of them, uh, anything to do anything like that. Now the wall maker itself has options. For one, you can set it to solid. This is for uh, if you have a really big map structure you're working on, you can set solid, and that will keep it from generating the walls, so that it's a lot quicker to uh, move things around and add things in. Um, you can turn off metering or mitering, I should say. And this will give you, instead of creating miter corners, this will actually take the brushes and create a negative brush inside a positive brush. The, the pink brush itself is the negative, the blue is the positive. And you can use these also outside in the regular map. Um, but I like a miter, it makes, a, it makes for a neater. I also have this where you can extrude the map. Now, if you notice here, Zoom in. Now the map is made with no intersecting corners. Maybe useful for something, maybe not. Uh, but that's what it does. Uh, and here you can set the thickness of the walls that it generates. So we could go, we could do something really, really nutty. And just don't do this because it makes your map really hard to see. And, you know, so this is what I love about this program is that these dynamic structures, uh, and uh, sorry to repeat again, I, uh, if we have something like inside here, inside our wall maker, we can add in uh, we have here uh, We have here a radial duplicator, right? We're going to put that radial duplicator dead center. Actually, we want the radial. So we're going to put the radial duplicator right here, right? If I can get zoomed in. So there's our duplicator. Now, we have a dynamic mirroring on the map. Yeah, I thought about doing that too, but I'm waiting till I get more of the bugs and things crushed out and then we can actually work. Then I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to make like a, a match map live. I'll probably do that like next week. So, uh, now here's the power of this. Now, let's say this is our match map just... For shits and grins and uh, let's say oh, you want this brush here to be uh, down the wall now if you watch the one on this side all updates to the map are 
dynamically included right back into the map. So you can change these things and they will change on the mirror, everything in dynamic. And this also works for uh, things like your map, your uh, spawn points can be made and then use one of these duplicators to flip the spawn to the other side uh, and also increase the team number while uh, while it does it. So you literally only have to make one spawn and all the spawns on the other side will be appropriately mirrored. So let's see if I can crash this yet. There you go. See if it made the whole map. Hold on. I don't think it did actually. So if we do this to, I don't know why this doesn't work. I had this working before. I apologize, guys. Uh, let me see. Yeah, for s oh. Because we're inside the grid. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Okay. That's the other thing, too. When you work with the radial, sometimes you need to um, cut your grid size in half. Since it's dividing by two or multiplying by two or however you want to put it. It still didn't work. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway. Sorry guys, this should actually work because I actually use this to make a map before, but for some reason it's not. I don't know if it's because, I don't know if they changed it in the version or, nope. But there's a workaround for that. We can take our radial and disassociate duplicator images. This will take the radial duplicator and actually create regular brushes without the duplicator, which are then inside the wall maker. Then you can take the wall maker and disassociate that and you can actually edit the individual faces and sides. So let's double check this one. Jits, how do you like compiling maps now, dude? Like you hit a button and the map is compiled. <laughs> this man's been at it since the Quake one days. He knows the meaning of pain. All right, so that worked. Let's see. So anyway, there's our stupid, simple, weird map structure. Uh, everything created quite dynamically. Now that's, you know, that's one kind of uh, dynamic structure that they have. And I'm, I'm gonna show just one more thing that we have from before. Uh, let's go on the world spawn and insert a, uh, so what do we have here? This is the path extruder. Now, what does this crazy thing do? Let's check this over here. And I don't remember how to use this one. All right, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use the other one, the one that I worked on last week, because I can't remember how to work that one. Uh, let's see. So, insert. Okay, so this is the path, uh, this is called path duplicator. This takes a shape in the template here, and what we have here is a positive cube and a negative cube. 
So if we make these the same texture, right? So, sorry. Now these right here, they don't have to be on your map. They can be anywhere. In fact, they, you can hide them or do whatever you want for them. You don't see them in the actual compile. It uses these two brushes or more brushes to create a a complex. Uh, you can use this to make things like pipes that travel along the map or uh, twisty weird hallways, things like caves. Let me just compile this to show. Well, yeah, they yeah, no, they can still take a little while now, but I mean, it's not like before, dude. We're like, you know, literally two hours to, uh, you know, two hours to light and vis a map. Anyway, this is what the path duplicator does. Actually, creates a. A structure, a map structure in game based on uh, based on you know this template form, which is uh, that way we can see it. Okay, so this is the template which is creating the shape. So we can actually take uh, Oh, here's something else too. All right, so right click, tag point, right click, that oh, shit. Might help if I wasn't an idiot. All right, so tag the point, glue to tagged, tag the point. Glue to tag. So now we have a, uh, you know, an inverted. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, you get the idea. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine Siege Castle is kind of crazy. That's uh... So anyway, all I did was change this template. Now we can recompile the map. And now instead of the pipe, now we have the actual girder shape. And you can add more points to make uh, more, uh, you know, just basically anything you want can go inside of there. <clears throat> and then when you're when you're when you're happy with the basics of it, you can take this uh, path duplicator here and disassociate. And this will actually create the brushes, uh, negative and positive, that you can use to, you know, do more detail work or makes makes uh, more, uh, you know, uh, small changes or small positional changes that don't really fit in with the regular. This is why I love this program so much. So that's why I'm going over this again. So um, it, it's the dynamic nature of it. Things can be moved and changed. Uh, add to that the fact that we have you know, an unlimited number of undos, well, more or less unlimited. I think I think you can actually set a number, but we can go back through this map until we get back to where we were quite a while ago. Until we get to a certain point. It's not, it's not completely unlimited, but, uh, and we can go back forward through the map just like you do in something like, uh, you know, Photoshop or any other, any other program that, that wasn't written when people still wrote dinosaurs. Uh, okay. Yeah, I was kind of hoping that I would have maybe one or two more people's maps to look at or show off or to solve problems, but those, but uh, they didn't come. So, you know, I'm not really quite sure where to go from this from here, but you guys have a, uh, oh, who else is here now? We got, oh, I got more people. What's up, everybody? I see I got some more people in now. Thanks for coming, guys. 
It's kind of an off-the-cuff thing here, uh, just sort of going over stuff at random because I'm trying to introduce people to this program that, that uh, helped me so much. Ah, uh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> so, uh, oh, I saw something a second ago that I completely forgot about. So, let's say you have a face here, right? And you want to have something like, a, where is it? This right here is really cool. Now, we were talking about making rocks and stuff last week, and uh, I was trying to remember all the tricks that are in this for... But this is a really simple thing. We're just going to make a cone over the face. Now, that brush has a... And it's still one brush. It doesn't make it into two brushes. It actually adds more faces and adds in the cone. There's a, uh, there's other stuff like this too, but that's just one. This is just another way that you can make things like rocks. You can even add one here. Uh, now we have another one. And you can invalidate your brushes. So you could take something like this delete the unused faces, and now you have sort of a natural, uh, and we'll see if this crashes the uh, compiler. Nope, oh, okay. Yeah, so now we have sort of a natural, now it wouldn't be metal like this, you have to use like a rock texture or something. Um, but you know, there's just lots of little weird things you can do with this. I mean, I could spend all day just poking at stuff. So, uh, is anything you guys want to see, or anything you want to see demonstrated, or talked about, or... By the way, guys, in case you're wondering, that's what a coffee cup looks like. It should be usable for self-defense. Okay, you're talking about like for cutting. Uh, they don't really do clipping planes in this. What you end, what you do do, no pun intended, is uh, create a brush, right? And uh, we'll give it a texture. We'll give it the uh, the grass texture here, right? Uh, there is another way to do this with the plane, but I don't remember. But this is the way I usually did it when I was mapping. So now any face on this brush, right, can be tagged. So if we go over here and we go to tag face, now that particular face of the brush is tagged. So whatever, uh, so we can take it and do something, do something like this. So now we have this shape, right? If we take this shape, put it over this shape, take this one, and where is it? Uh, where is it? Slide poly. Oh, that's why. Thank you, Zhanghua, because I would have totally missed that. So, tag our face. Now we can go into this brush, and there's a thing in here somewhere that says cut poly along tagged. This will cut this brush off. Move this out of the way. So now this brush is actually cut in two. Now we can take that brush and uh, delete it, and now that part of the shape is gone. You could also take that. You could also take this shape and move it somewhere else. So that's just one way of doing cuts. Uh, and you uh, would uh, and also, this uses a 32-bit floating point math for all the points and everything, so you can, generally speaking, almost all the time, 
rotate an object and get the object back to where it was originally without it just, you know, without it distorting as you rotate it around from the integer, uh, uh, lack of precision in the integer math. Mm. Can do some strange stuff too with this. So if we drag this in here, now we'll have a little... But it's outside of the uh, wallmaker, so it's actually a feature on the map. Since it's, out it's outside the wallmaker plugin, it becomes a positive brush instead of a negative brush. Anyway. So that's basically the easiest way to do cutting in this because that way the cuts that you make will have a texture and not just be undefined. Uh, there's also a... They have a 3D plane thing in here, but honestly, I haven't used it in so long. I don't remember how to use it. I'll try to add it to my uh, try to add it to my list for next week of stuff to go over. Um, but yeah, cutting with these is great, and you know you can make a a uh, like if you're going to do a lot of cuts with different textures, you can actually take this and make each side a different texture, rotate it around, and use the different sides to make cuts. This is also pretty handy. That gives you like a kind of like a cutting paintbrush. Okay. Uh, okay. Anything else, guys? Let's see. Yeah, I mean, it's possible to actually build brushes in this. I think you could do that in BSP too, I guess. I don't remember, but to build a brush by literally making faces and dragging the points of the faces around and making them line up and stuff. So they're, you know, <clears throat> since you can actually access inside your brushes, you can access an individual face. Just be careful because this is a really good way to uh, really do horrible things to your map. What's up? Uh, I've got a few more people. Uh, any of you new guys or anybody who wasn't here earlier, do you have any questions? Do you have anything you want to see or anything you want to understand or, you know, the answer to life, the universe, and everything? Buddy, that is... That would be outside the scope of this. You'd have to use Terragen. And uh, maybe we can look at that too. Let me, um, hold on one second. Let me, I'm going to add that to my list for next week. Because I actually use that for Ranger. And it worked out really well. Uh, just understand that in Quake 2, terrain is always going to be a very limited thing and something you should not use too much of because it will just bog your map down. And it really doesn't do, you're never going, it's never going to look like Far Cry, you know, no matter what you do. Uh, but for randomizing terrain, eh, I would think one of the best things to do, and uh, I'll make, I'm going to put this, yeah, so this, this is a good question because this gives me a whole show next week, is to use a, a, no, I used the outside software to make the terrain first, and then I built the map around the terrain. And that's the only way I really know to do it with this and have it come out right. Uh, now, this does have a terrain maker, uh, Uh, let me see. They have a... Where is it? Yeah. So they have a Terrain Maker plugin that's supposed to work. But, I mean, literally, if you play around with this, you would actually know more about it than me because I never really messed with it. Um, but you can make a... Uh, there's Terrain Makers for... 
the two, the two X and the four is about how the brushes are set up. Uh, you know, how the triangles are arranged and how many triangles. So a four is going to have twice the triangles. Two is a different kind of thing, but let's, let's make one real quick just for, just for fun. Uh, we need a terrain texture. Okay. Where's that? Where is that? Ah, terrain texture. Okay. So here's the terrain maker, which works on a brush. Like I said, I have not really messed with this. So, you know, uh, whatever you figure out, you'll be, you'll have to tell me because I have no idea. Uh, I know it likes to be on a nice, even grid size. There we go. So this actually gives you a mesh of terrain, and then you can do things to it, like, uh, let's see. Yeah, I, you know, like I said, I'm kind of lost here. I have not really messed with this thing, but... It's apparently fairly powerful. Use this dialog box. Yeah, I, I don't know how to use this. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I have no idea what I'm doing. It is very powerful. It does give you terrain editing, but uh, like I said, I generally did them about... Uh, I generally did them outside. So, yeah, I'm going to put that down. So next Saturday, uh, I'm going to actually show how to, which is an excellent idea for a show, too. Uh, I'm going to take uh, Terragen, make a basic terrain with Terragen, and then build a map out of that terrain the way that I did Ranger. Because that's the only way I really know how to do it with Quake 2 and have it work. Because you, you throwing terrain into Quake 2 willy-nilly is just going to make a lot of world poly and really probably not help you very much. Um, it's not going to be uh, paintball speed running uh, friendly, you know what I mean? But that's a good idea. So I'm gonna make we'll make that for next week. That'll be my whole thing next week. So okay, you guys, you got anything else, dude? You know. Sorry, I don't mean I'm not trying to dodge a question or anything, but I literally can't answer it right now. I don't have the stuff for it. I don't have the program set up, so. Okay, guys, I think that's going to be it for today. We, you know, I, I was kind of hoping I'd have maybe one or two more people who were experimenting. At least I thought JMR maybe would show up with a, with a map uh, or half a map or something. But we don't. So that's fine. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll pick this up next week, same time, 2 o'clock Saturday. And uh, I'm going to, I will make the show about making a map from a terrain thing because that gives me something to, uh, gives me something to feature probably make a much more entertaining video to watch afterward than these sort of rambling sessions so uh and then we'll do a q a uh afterward uh split the stream up or something like that so thank you everybody for coming very much i appreciate y'all coming and uh jean -Wa, thank you for all your work and thank you for giving me lots of headaches i really appreciate it headaches are good they help me to uh <clears throat> they help me to figure out problems because if you weren't messing with that map i never would have fixed the uh the team spawn issue thing because I wouldn't have known it was there. So, uh, yeah, you know, so if any of you guys mess with this or you need anything, um, 
you know, I'm on Discord. Just uh, message me, and uh, we'll see what we can work out. And, uh, okay, thanks a lot, guys. I will see you all next Saturday. Well, I may not see you all on Discord anyway, but uh, I look forward to seeing you all again next Saturday, okay? Have a good one, guys.